How much RAM do you really need for Mastercam? How well does the minimum suggested 8 gigs work? What about the recommended 32? What if we used more? To find out, I ran a series of benchmarks using a few Mastercam files on systems equipped with 8, 16, 32, and even 64 gigs of RAM. The benchmark first is the standard benchmark 3.0. Uh, this is a file that's got several 3D tool paths and a stock model that need to be generated. Second, I'll use that same file, but I'm going to have a bunch of other applications open, trying to fully load up the RAM with all the information we can. Third, a complex mill turn demo file that has roughly 100 various operations. There's some turning, some part handoffs, 2D, and even some 3D milling. First up, 8 gigabytes. One thing to point out here, this is a single stick that is 8 gigs. Why does that matter? We're only using one of the memory channels. We need a second stick to use both memory channels. Essentially, two sticks of four gigabytes should outperform one stick of eight. But this is the best I have, so we're gonna carry on. Benchmark one, our eight gigabyte setup performed the task in three minutes and 43 seconds. That same benchmark done with all of the other apps opened up. We're looking at three minutes and 53 seconds. And our mill turn file with no other apps open, we're looking at three minutes, 56. Next up, let's see if adding more RAM increases the performance of the system. So we've taken a second stick of eight gigabytes of RAM, and now we are using both channels since we've got two sticks in here. Our benchmark number one, we're now doing at three minutes and 36. So that's a modest 3% boost in performance. That same benchmark uh, with all the apps opened up, we're looking at three minutes and 54 seconds, roughly the same as that eight gigabyte setup was so no performance increase and the mill turn file we're looking at a rebuild of 351 uh, so a very small boost here as well let's keep going on here with the numbers next up the 32 gigabyte install this is two sticks of 16 gigs benchmark one 334 so again similar to our 16 gigabyte setup benchmark one again with all of the apps opened up we're now looking at three minutes and 41 seconds and we're starting to see what that extra RAM can actually do for you. So we're a 6% increase here over the 16 and 8 gig setups. The mill turn file, again, no apps opened up, just Mastercam running here. And we're looking at 349, again, a similar time to our previous uh, 16 gig setup. Let's carry on with the setups. Let's hop into 64 now. So we've got four sticks of 16 gigs. Benchmark 1, 337, pretty much the same we've been seeing all along here. Uh, benchmark 1 again with all apps opened up, 341. So the same time we saw with our 32 gigs, which was an improvement over the 8 and 16. And the mill turn file here for our 64 gig setup, uh, 350. So again, similar times we saw previous. Looking at these numbers, we can see a performance increase if we find our RAM is getting filled up as was the case for all benchmarks with the 8 gigs, and was also the case for the 16 gigs when we had the all apps uh, opened up scenario. However, there was no performance gained going from 32 to 64, and even the 16 gigabyte setup ran just as fast if we weren't using a bunch of other apps. Now with the cost of RAM, you might be thinking the best option is to throw 64 or even 128 gigs and be done with it, uh, but I'm going to throw this out at you here. If you aren't using all that extra RAM, you're actually running slower than you could be. Why? Overclocking. Large amounts of RAM, say over 32 gigs, are hard to keep stable when overclocked. Now, most of you are probably brushing this off right away saying, I don't overclock, nor would I ever. Uh, but before you say that, let me throw a few more numbers at you. Overclocking the 32 gigabyte setup, uh, more on how this is done here in a second. Uh, resulted in times for benchmark number one, we're looking at 3 minutes 24 seconds. A further more aggressive overclock got this down to 320. So roughly 5% better than the non-overclocked 32 gigs and 10% faster than the uh, benchmark was at 8 gigabytes. How is this overclocking done? It's not as complex as you might think. Uh, your system needs to be capable of doing this. Not all are, but you go into your BIOS and you simply turn on uh, XMP. So I'm referring to an Intel system here. But basically what this does is it loads the profile of your RAM into the BIOS so it can be fully utilized. Otherwise, it uses default values, and these default values are very conservative. Now, I found running XMP on this 64 gigabyte setup unreliable, which would cause system crashes, which makes using the overclock with the 64 gigs uh, not something that I would recommend. 
So in conclusion, if you can deal with the occasional slowdown due to heavy loads, 16 gigabytes is probably fine. If you find you're doing a lot of heavy lifting, uh, 32 gigabytes should be more than enough, even with multiple programs running at the same time. These two options will allow you to get that extra bit of performance using the XMP overclock. You are part of the, say, 1% that would actually use up all 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to assume here that you're not doing heavy video editing in Premiere or FEA in SOLIDWORKS. The very few of you that are using all 32 gigs in Mastercam, it's better to upgrade to 64 gigabytes and perhaps lose that tiny boost of performance XMP will give you. As if the RAM is full, that means the system is going to be writing to your solid state drive or even worse, your hard disk drive for storage. And that calculation time and that processing time is going to be at the mercy of the speed of your physical storage. Similar to what we saw with that uh, in the 8 gigabyte setup when we were using all apps. For me now, I'm going to continue on using the 64 gigabyte setup, see if I can get it overclocked and stabled. And more importantly, if I can get anywhere close to filling it up.